And you're recording, Manny? We're recording now. Okay. All right, it's 533 and we will uh, start now. Um, good evening. Uh, welcome to our Dinette Culture Night tonight. Uh, we have a special presentation tonight specifically focusing on infant massage, um, you know, child massage. And, um, you know, this semester we're focusing on the young children. Uh, so our presenters um, this semester will be, you know, talking about um, younger kids while um, sharing some cultural perspectives at the same time. So uh, this presenter is uh, Miltina Chi, and I'll let her introduce herself. But also I wanted to mention, um, you know, uh, this year we are celebrating 50 years of Navajo language at um, UNM. So in celebration of that, we've been continuing to host um, our Dine Culture Night and we moved online due to the pandemic. So welcome. Ado Miltina. Ado in the da um a quite a dole or he ha gone up. Okay, oh um good evening, do yad a um she a miltina chi in a she do um tena bithling shle kitha treat me but his chin homathan dash a che a she he a dashanella. So big el gaida e nasha um shachna e tra do um achi we'll go ahead and um get started and thank you you know everybody for joining um and allow me to share um something that i really enjoy doing um and that that's a passion for 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 me so yeah um guiding your hands to promote growth and creating lifelong healthy bonds. Um, and I really like um, the, the picture I'm using here is, um, you know, she's um, in a really nice position for a toddler, you know, to um, just, you know, do a touch, um, simple touch massage to help with um, strengthening the immune system or even to help um, relieve gas, you know, baby, um, for toddlers, they don't have to be in that, um, you know, on the bed and relax and stuff because they're, they're moving. So any position that they can get in and you can have them and to do the massage on them is, um, is good. So I really um, like this, you know, it's a simple position to do. Why is that? You know, I think your presentation popped out of the um, presentation mode. Um, okay, girls, how do I do this? They can see my slides. Yeah. Um, <laughs> try exiting um, a return. Well, while she's um, uh, dealing with her PowerPoint slides, usually if you're on a laptop, it'll it sometimes pops out. Really? Um, and, and it pops out of the Okay. So, uh, my name is Melvis Echi, and um, I um, am, I'm at the University of New Mexico, and um, we, myself and Manny and Tamara and Jalan, uh, we work together along with Esther Yazos to um, run the Navajo language program. And um, as part of the Navajo language program, 
um, back in fall 2019, we started uh, implementing a Diné Culture Night in, um, as a way to um, connect with UNM students at the Lobo Rainforest and also as a way to um, eventually that turned into connecting uh, with the community, uh, with the um, Albuquerque community. At the time, back in fall 2019, we worked with uh, two uh, Navajo cultural um, consultants, uh, Mary Whitehair Frazier and Warlance Chi. Um, so, uh, so this kind of really took off and you know, we thank you for attending um, tonight. So we're gonna have uh, two trivias um, questions this evening. Okay, and um, we can uh, do one now. So uh, let me share, uh, let's see. Um, so um, here's the trivia question. I will say the question, I'll, I'll read the question for you. And the first person to answer, um, the, first, the first person to answer the, the, the question uh, correctly in the chat box um, will receive a prize. Our prize is we have um, a UNM Navajo Language Program swag um, that we will mail to you. So um, the winner, we will need your home address so we can mail you some swag. Um, tonight uh, for the first round, we have a cup that we would like to um, mail to someone. And it says, on there with our UNM logo. Uh, we have a notebook, um, a pen, and um, what do you call this uh, stress reliever ball? Oh. Okay. So get your um, keyboard hands ready, fingers ready. Um, and the question is, let's see. How many years has Navajo been taught at UNM? We got 50 right away from Paula. Someone said two, it's actually 50. Paula, congratulations, you're our winner. So um, Paula, if you could private message me your um, address and I will send you some swag. So hopefully Meltina has, um, how's it going out there Meltina? And we'll do another trivia later on, or we might just do both of them right now. <laughs> Congratulations, Paula. So um, let's see, message me. My name, my name in here should be Melvitha Archie. Uh, message me your... Um, your mailing address. No, we don't sell the cups. If we were in a out there and we were out, you know, promoting our program, we would be handing these items out. Um, so, you know, um, don't worry, we still have, you know, several boxes left. <laughs> and, um, maybe you'll get the next trivia question correct. Try sharing your screen now, um, Maltina. We're going to go sharing from here and then just start playing it right there. We do offer a minor in Navajo at UNM. And um, so if you're looking for a minor, uh, you can um, you know, consider our program. Or if you have children who are at UNM, you know, let them know that there is a Navajo minor there. 
it's an 18 uh, credit hour, 21 credit hour program. It looks like we are back. Okay, all right, I think I'm back. So I'm sorry about that. Um, Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, what? Um, do you want to show presenter view or no? No. So you don't, you have to go back to hide presenter view. Okay, all right, got it. Okay, um, okay, so let's do this again. So um, again, um, um, again, my name is Miltina Chi. Um, I'm from Lake Valley, New Mexico. I have three children. Um, I have a BA in criminal justice and social welfare and an MA in counseling. And I have been in the early intervention field for about 15 years. So um, upon returning to work for the Navajo Nation Early Intervention Program, I really saw the need you know, for healthy attachments and bond between newborns, babies and toddlers and their parents and caregivers. Um, so, you know, one of the way was um, to create that was to become certified as an infant touch and massage instructor, which I did in April of 2018. And I did that through the International Institute of Infant Massage in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And um, this tree, I really like this tree. I came upon it. Um, and this is what um, I, I envision you know, creating the, the bonds between moms and their babies or dads and their babies or grandparents and their babies, you know, creating that healthy bond, you know, it, it grows and it grows and it grows and it, it creates, you know, that love, that um, sense of belonging. I'm wanted, I'm loved, and this is where I belong. So that's, you know, I really like that tree. Um, professionally, you know, um, I, again, I'm a certified infant touch and massage instructor. I've been a developmental specialist for over 15 years in the early intervention field for children, um, birth to three, you know, who have developmental delays um, and disabilities and, you know, disorders. I currently am the program supervisor for the Navajo Nation Home Visiting Program. And this presentation, just a, a small overview, this presentation will touch on teaching and sharing the benefits of infant touch and massage for you and your baby and how it may help you with things um, like tummy troubles, such as colic, to sleeping, to creating healthy bonds. And when I teach infant massage, you know, with families, um, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, caretakers, I integrate how infant touch and massage promotes all developmental area developmental areas as well. Um, and during that time, I also encourage the use of Navajo language. And then the picture I have here um, is um, my son and and my and my nephew. He's holding his little brother. And again, you know, this is a really simple um, way to hold baby. You know, they're in a they're both in a very comfortable position. And the way my son has his hands on the back of um, his little brother, that's touch massage right there. Um, and depending if he wanted to, he can put a little bit more pressure. And if the pressure is too much for, for um, his little brother, he will um, react in some way. He'll maybe kind of move or he'll make a sound or something which will allow um, you know, my son to kind of release the pressure. They're also you know, facing towards each other. So you know, they're experiencing that, that connection of um, being close to each other, smelling each other, you know, hearing each other's heartbeat and, you know, and just really being close together. And that's... Um, what I want um, to, um, that's what I work towards. Why I teach infant touch and massage to parents and caretakers um, so that you um, have skillful and mindful touch massage strategies to use with your baby um, so that, you know, the approach is individualized for just you and your baby as well. 
And because you know your baby best, um, you are the expert on your baby with your baby. Um, and, and here, I really like this quote, and this is the lady that I learned from. We know that parents know their babies better than anyone, and that many parents have an innate felt sense of what their child is experiencing. It is our fundamental belief that it is most advantageous that parents and not therapists learn to massage their children and that they function as their children's most entrusted and competent advocate. So I, I really like I really like the way that's put. What is infant massage? Um, infant massage, you know, it covers five different areas. The first is is the process of stroking the muscle of an infant using a variety of specialized massage techniques. Infant massage includes massaging the legs, the feet, the stomach, the chest, the arms, hands, face, and the back. Infant massage is vocalizations, eye-to-eye -eye contact, and other positive behavioral reinforcements, which are also important components of the massage. Infant massage can be used to provide relaxation, stimulation, or relief. Um, so when I say relaxation, you know, sometimes babies, you know, they have that high muscle tone or their, their, their energy level is pretty high. So you can use the massage to, to calm them down. And then we have babies who um, are, you know, who don't have as much energy level, you know, they tend to to sleep a lot more and maybe if you're kind of worried why is my baby sleeping too much we need to stimulate baby so that you know baby's energy goes up and not sleeping longer than he or she should be sleeping and relief you know there's a lot of stressors for babies as newborns you know they're coming into the world and they're experiencing just everything you know that's around them um, so it helps with that, that stress relief as well. And this is what I really like about infant massage. Also, um, it's a bonding activity between parents and their infant. So I wanna go into a little bit about um, massage and Navajo culture. Um, so, you know, growing up, um, Navajo and, you know, with the Navajo culture and Navajo language, Navajos already practice massage first and foremost. And everybody knows that um, during the Kinalta, you know, after the, the ceremony, the morning of the ceremony, um, the, um, the Kinalta's mom, you know, she gives her daughter a full massage. Um, so that she can grow strong and, and healthy and everything that she hopes for her, her daughter to achieve and to accomplish in life. And then there's aches and pains and we paw away the aches and pains. Um, so when I was um, smaller, you know, I remember my Nolly lady would, you know, if I'm aching somewhere, she would, you know, sit me down or she would, you know, kind of touch where it's aching and she'll kind of touch and squeeze and then she'll say, pa, you know, so she's letting go of the pain and then you feel, you know, a lot better and then the pain is gone. And my dad and my mom, you know, I, they, they, I've seen them do that with their um, grandchildren as well. So, you know, that's another way Navajos, you know, we already practice massage in our culture. Grandmas, you know, massage their grandchildren's nose their ears or their mouth, you know, when they're younger and it's um, to mold it so that, you know, they have nice nose, you know, nice ears. And, you know, for example, for my mouth, my Nolly lady, again, she would go and massage my gums so that I would have, um, you know, nice straight teeth. And, you know, I have nice straight teeth now. Um, and then medicine men, you know, if, you know, when you go get help from um, Patrahi, you know, they, when they're, uh, when they're um, helping you and, you know, they, they, they go through that and they kind of massage, you know, certain parts of your body and they, and they um, feather away 
the aches and the pains and any bad feelings that, you know, um, that are within you, um, any unhealthy feeling, you know, they, they, they feather that all away. So those are some ways that Navajos, you know, already practice massage, you know, from, you know, what, what I've seen, you know, from growing up. And then we go into, I want to compare, you know, Kinalda and infant massage. So um, when we're looking at um, the Kinalda, you know, she is holy and pure for several days from the time she gets her first menstrual. menstrual. So, you know, she's fragile. Um, when baby is born, baby is fragile and pure as well. And then we go back over to the Kinalda. The mom is the mentor. The mentor, um, in some cases, you know, a lot of, you know, some families, somebody else is um, the mentor. But, you know, in our family, um, it's the mom who is the mentor because she knows her daughter and she knows what she wants for her daughter. She wants her daughter to be healthy and strong. Um, mentally, emotionally, physically. And when we go back to infant massage, when baby is born, baby will always have a connection with mom. Mom knows her baby the best. She's the expert on her baby. And she will continue to do so throughout life. And then we come back to Kinalda. Um, mom mentors her daughter throughout her puberty ceremony. When we go back to the infant massage and compare it, mom is also usually the one to spend time with and gently nurture her baby. She takes care of her baby. She holds her baby. She cuddles with her baby. She feeds her baby. Um, back to Kinalda. Um, her state of being and change she is going through, um, she is talked to with kindness and beautiful words, love. She is cared for for those days during her Kinalta. And then we go back to the baby. A child's first three years of life is a time to teach and mold a baby. Baby, they go through so many changes and they are capable of learning a lot and taking in so much um, at that time. Then we go to Kinalta. The morning after the ceremony, she gets a full body massage again, you know, by her mom. And for infant massage, mom can massage her baby and she can, and it will benefit her throughout life as well. Values of infant touch and massage. Um, it pro promotes development across all domains, developmental domains, creates bonds between babies and their parents, caretakers, facilitate and promotes family relationships. And all of this because relationships are important. In Navajo culture, relationships are important. Families are important. If there's a birthday party, guess who's there? We're all there. If a baby laughs, guess who's there? Everybody is there. Anything that goes on, you know, we're there. We're there to help celebrate and, and, and help out and, and be there, you know, as a family and celebrate a lot of the things that go on within our culture. And um, I have these two pictures here because this is what I... My, this is my, my, my goal. When children get older, um, they, they tend to shy away and want to be on their own and they just, they just go. In, this, in the slide on the left, my son, you know, he cuddles up, you know, to his my son. And he does it, um, he kind of sneaks in there and, and, and he'll cuddle up with his son. He'll also sneak and sneak onto her lap. And my son is going to be um, 21. And he still, you know, does this. And he'll also, you know, do that with um, a couple of his aunties as well. And the bond is there. The connection is there. 
he knows it's okay. You know, it's okay for me to do this. I'm safe here. Um, I'm wanted here and I'm loved here. So this is what I envisioned for all the babies that I work with and for all of our Navajo babies and their moms and their dads and their grandmas and their caretakers. And that's why I um, really enjoy the infant touch and massage. Benefits of infant touch and massage. By using simple touch and massage, parents and caretakers can enhance their role as a parent and provide the right type of touch and massage in promoting you know, the optimal development. Touch and massage promotes creating healthy bonds and relationships. Parents and caretakers and their baby will experience many benefits from infant massage during a child's first years and for many years to come. For babies, benefit for babies. First and foremost, they get to bond with their mom and their dad, their grandma, their grandma, grandpa. You know, they get to bond with their caretaker, family members, and, and infant massage is not just for, for mom or um, grandparents or dads. I really encourage um, dads to take part in, in learning the infant touch and massage because a lot of times, you know, dad's out working and they come back late and then it's eat and then rest up and then go back to work the next day. So they, they feel that, you know, maybe they feel that they're not connected with their baby, but, you know, they can take a few minutes and, you know, learn some infant touch and massage. And even though that they're at work, you know, they can feel that connection with their, with their baby. Baby's cues are, will be read, you know, you'll know your baby's cues. Baby will have the ability to trust, you know, you as mom or dad or as a grandma or a, gra a grandpa, a caretaker. It's relaxing and calming for babies. It relieves discomfort. It helps with sleep, or if there's too much sleep going on, it can, it helps with that as well. And it, it relieves stress for babies. It relieves constipation. Baby is aware, you know, of their body. So when I say body awareness, um, you know, babies are, they're, they're newborn, you know, they're kind of trying to figure out who they are, where they fit and where, where their place is at in this world. So, you know, when you touch different parts of their bodies, you know, they're aware, oh, that's my hand that is attached to me. Or, you know, when you massage their back, that's my back, or you massage their feet, oh, that's my feet, that's attached to me too, you know, so they're, they, they start becoming aware of the different body parts. Um, again, strengthening of the immune system, digestion, and regulation. So here's a, um, a really brief video, um, and it's going to talk about um, strengthening the immune system and to move gas or to move poop along. It's really brief and during infant massage, you know, I, I encourage moms and dads and grandmas to use the Navajo language. The amount of strokes you can use, the numbers, you can tell your baby what body part you're touching in Navajo. So they're learning their body parts, they're learning their numbers or nana, you know, they're learning the word again, letting them know that, oh, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to do this again. So let me see if I can find the, here we go. For building the immune system. Here's the rib cage right here. So you just hold below the rib cage and you don't want to press on the rib cage and you just hold. Depending on your baby, the, the pressures will vary in what you do. So you can hold, you can roll downwards gently you can roll and then if you need to you can bring in both hands your baby's going to be small enough so that the flow is going to be much better so that's for immune system to move 
gas and the poop, you know, if there's constipation or, you know, that would be here. You know, this is where it starts and it goes all the way around. We have a major organ here, so you got to come down and then bring it back and then out. So, so that one you'll just go like this and sometimes the size of your baby, you may need to use both hands and your fingers are going to run all the way here you can come down around the organ and then you're going to come back down and you're going to move it out and then you can keep going and you never want your um always make sure there's a hand on there and you know, here we got to come down and you don't want to press too hard you just want to be gentle and then out so that's to move gas constipation get the poop out for and then we go on to benefits for parents you will feel more comp competent and confident in your role as a as a parent you know you you already are the expert, you know, in your baby's development and anything that your baby does and go through, you're just going to feel more comp competent and confident because you have that connection with your baby and you're able to um, understand what they're trying to communicate to you. It will increase um, your ability to help relax your baby. Sometimes we were, you know, we're working, 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 or, you know, we're doing stuff and your baby needs to relax and, you know, they're crying and whatnot. So infant massage can help you with relaxing your baby um, and, and calming baby down. Unwind, relax, and listen to your baby. As um, parents, um, you know, some, you know, we do get frustrated and I'm not going to lie. You know, we do get frustrated. We tend to raise our voice to our baby because we don't know what our baby is crying for. We don't know what our baby is fussy about. Um, so if we're in a position and we're making that um, connection through infant and massage during that time, you're going to unwind, you're going to relax and you're going to listen to your baby. And you're going to learn those skills, you know, the more you do infant touch and massage with your baby. Reinforcing your parenting skills and validating your parent as a role. You're going to go, oh, I can do this. You know, if your baby fusses or your baby makes a sound or your baby cries, you're going to recognize the, the difference and you're going to know. So that's how, you know, you'll, you'll your parenting skills and your, your um, parent roles are validated. In your bonding with your baby, it's a one-on-one -on -one interaction. You know, just you and your baby and your bonding. That's your time together. You're learning each other. You guys are hanging out together and you're learning all about each other. And your ability to read your baby's cues is, is gonna go up. And then you yourself will um, be regulated. You'll be able to, um, kind of stop, relax, and, you know, bring yourself back to deal with, you know, everything, you know, all the emotions that are, that are, um, you know, out of balance, you know, you'll be able to bring it and, 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 and regulate your, yourself uh, as a parent. So then we go into um, developmental, um, area, developmental domains, and um, there, there's a couple of, there's several areas of developmental domains. And um, during um, this time, you know, you can always, there's a lot of opportunities to integrate Navajo language. There's a lot of opportunities to um, teach number, to teach body parts, you know, to sing little songs with your babies um, in Navajo. Um, so the first one is our, our gross motor. And our gross motor are movements related to the large muscles, such as the legs, the arms, and the trunk. These are the muscles that help us to crawl, walk, jump, you know, and, and run and do all those 
those dangerous things and but are yet fun. That's what it allows us to do. Infant massage helps in this developmental area by improving muscle tone and coordination and increase your body awareness. So I have a, a little video and um, Stop. So that video, you know, he knows where his body is at. So he knows where his arms need to be at to support his entire body. He knows where his knees need to go so that he doesn't fall over and the movement that he's doing so that he can crawl and get from one place to the next. You know, that's his way of moving. So it helps with that coordination to, 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 um, to crawl and to move. And if there's not that coordination to move your body back and forth as such, and our hands are just to our side, and if we try to run with our hands to our side, we don't have that balance or we don't have that coordination. Our body is not in sync or it doesn't know, you know how to balance itself. So all our muscles and all our body parts have to work together you know, to move, to walk, to run, to climb, and so forth. And then there's fine motor. Fine motor movements involve involving the muscle, the smaller muscle groups, such as those in the hand and in the wrists. And here, my niece, she's, um, she's using, and includes also eye and hand coordination, you know, how you use your eyes, you know, to 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 do these tiny things and and hold everything and you know coordinate all that. So here, you know, she has the nail polish and she's polishing her toenails with one um, hand. She's holding up her toe with the other one. She's polishing her nails and she's looking to where, you know, she knows she has that nail there to polish. So she's making sure she gets that area. And if you go on this side, you can see, you know, she did a really good job. And um, so that's the fine motor. Again, fine with infant massage, it improves the muscle tone and coordination and increases your body awareness. So she knows where all her body parts need to be and how she's aware of how they all work together so that she can accomplish her toes to be polished. And then here's a short video just about balance and you know coordination and being aware of your body. And so, you know, my son holding um, his little brother on that bouncy ball and just holding him at that hip is giving support. Um, his little brother is doing all the, the work to keep himself as balanced as he can and to strengthen his core muscles so that he can um, balance himself on that ball and be able to balance himself, you know, if he ever needs to balance, you know, throughout life. Um, and when he puts him on his tummy to the front and he rolls him forward, he's like, whoa, my hands need to come out because if I don't, you know, I'm gonna, you know, fall into the ground. So he's aware of what his body needs to do to um, protect himself. So that's um, how infant massage can um, help with the fine motor development. Here is um, a little video on loosening muscles for babies' um, fisted hands. Um, some babies, you know, it, it takes them a while to open up their hands and it's a natural process for them to open their hands and to be like this. They can't stay like this forever. You know, there are babies out there who are like this 
because their muscles are so tight. Maybe there's a lot of stress, you know, around them in their environment that they're just, you know, like this and their muscle tightens up. So massage, you know, with massage, you can, we, we can help them, you know, loosen up that mus th those muscles in the finger and stretch the, the muscles so that they start to open. And we need our hands to be open so that we can use um, our fingers, you know, to pick up tiny objects, to hold our spoon, to feed ourselves, you know, to pick up little objects and to, to use our fingers and those, those finer muscles. Sometimes baby will, their hands will be closed and they will open up and it's natural for babies to open up their hands. So a basic um, to help with that, you can start by, you know, um, rolling baby's hands open, you know, and then you can just start by holding. And then once they get used to it, you know, you can spread all the way and then back down, you know, to spread. Or you can just bring your thumb up like this because baby's hands are going to be small. Or fingers, you know, you can just do gentle presses all the way up. Or you can slide your thumb all the way up and then press the tip and then up. And here you can count, you integrate your Navajo language. Nake, ta, you know, nila yaja, you know, nila, nilashkan, nila, you know, nila, you know, teach body parts in Navajo. So that's how, you know, just basic, something really basic to share tonight to open up the baby's hands. Sometimes. And then we have our cognitive development. Our um, cognitive is how children think and explore and figure out things. It's the developmental development of knowledge, skills, and problem solving, which help children to think about and understand the world around them. And here, you know, she's um, using her her fine motor to to think about. Um, she's exploring the puzzles and she's thinking, and she's putting. Um, everything together so she knows that the red blocks all go together, the yellow blocks all go together. And she's also knows that yellow is a triangle and red is an octagon and green is a circle. And she's um, putting all that together and thinking about it and exploring. So before that happens, you know, children explore, you know, they look at things and they figure out things and it, it gets to where they're able to match in this case, you know, put the red blocks on one, the yellow blocks on one, because the colors are the same and the shape are the same as well. With infant massage, it enhances overall awareness of self and body boundaries, cause and effect, and increase attention span. So without, you know, we do need our hands to manipulate a lot of things and use that eye and hand coordination. So. The, 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 the hand massage to open up the, the hand is really good because we need our hands to explore. You know, it's very important to exploring. And then there's language and communication. It's the process through which children acquire or learn language. And there's two parts to um, language and communication. It's, there's receptive, the ability to understand the communication of others. And then there's expressive, the ability to express oneself through speech and gestures. Infant massage promotes emerging speech, direct eye gaze, listening, and turn taking. So here, you know, they're look, they're sitting, looking at each other, and they're playing patty cake. Um, they're making eye contact. You know, they're singing along. Um, so she's imitating. At this age, she already knew the words to to patty cake. So, you know, it was a lot of, okay, you, your turn to start, my turn to start, and 
she has all the, um, she's including language with the eye hand coordination and the movements of her arm. And, you know, the way she's sitting is really nice too. We should always, our children should never double W sit as well. So a little um, video on strengthening oral motor muscles. So some basic um, facial massage to stimulate the oral motor. And I'll use um, a spreading. And this is when you can integrate your numbers. Or you can go na, 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 na. You can also do pressing. And I'll demonstrate that up here. And then you go out. Or you, know, you can just hold, hold. This is a hold, and then you can just bring your finger up and hold. Or you can, you know, do this to the face, as well as just pressing. Or, you know, the spreading. And you can go integrate your numbers. Um, you know, body parts. Kad e na nitsit na na, kad e na zapa. You know, na zapa na na. And then for self-help, how children learn to meet their own needs involving activities and behaviors that lead to independence. And she's putting on her sock. Um, at this age, she was already putting her shirt on as well. Uh, so she's she's has pretty good, really good, you know, development as well. And her she was very independent, and she's still very independent. Um, so infant massage in the self help area, uh, I really like the um, how it stimulates the oral motor muscular awareness, the lip closure, and relaxation of tension needed for swallowing. The same muscles that we use to chew our food, swallow our food, to move our tongue around, you know, to be chewing our food, are the same muscles that we um, are the same muscles we use to speak, to make words. So those are very important. Um, so sometimes, you know, when you're out and about, or you know, when I'm working with children, I come across I come across children who. Are, are drooling a lot, you know, and then down there, it, it's really wet, you know, even with a bib on, you know, it, it's really wet. Um, so they're drooling and some cases, you know, babies, their mouth are just open like this all the time because their oral motor is um, not strong enough to hold their mouth shut and keep the, the, the drool in. Their or their um, the muscle tone along their um, face is low, is low and it's not strong enough. So we can stimulate that, you know, with using some of the techniques from the video or, um, right before the slide. Another way you can do that is um, to work the muscle skill is to play face games with your baby, you know, make different faces, you know, move your face around and have them imitate you. Um, or, you know, when they're old enough to um, use a straw, you know, you have them use a straw to maybe drink a thicker shake um, so that they'll um, increase those muscle skills. You know, you can put peanut butter around their mouth so that they can stick their tongue out and. You know, I know it's gross, but you know, in this field, you know, to demonstrate for families, you have to be comfortable, you know, with doing some odd, odd movements with your mouth. So there's more understanding of it. So if you put peanut butter around the mouth, you know, they're gonna to do this, but we have to be careful because children are very smart, right? So they'll get their finger and then they'll pick it and then they'll eat it like that. But then the peanut butter is thick enough where they really have to work their mouth to soften it up. You can also tell um, that oral motor is muscle 
is really low tone just by um, asking what type of foods baby is eating. A lot of the times when language is low, you the first thing you do is you ask, okay, what type of foods are your baby eating? And with the type of answers you get, you'll know, you know, that the muscle tones are pretty low and that's why the baby is picky or the baby doesn't want to eat certain foods. And then there's social and emotional, how children start to understand who they are, what they are feeling and what to expect when interacting with others. Development of being able to form and sustain positive relationships, experience, manage and express emotions. Infant massage encour encourages the infant and caregiver to engage in one another. So baby is learning how to engage and baby is learning from mom or dad or the caregiver, oh, it's okay to socialize. You know, you, you give them their boundaries and they learn their boundaries, how far they can take their socialization skills and where, the, um, where they need to stop and, and so forth. And we need social, we need to be social um, to, to create friendships, to um, develop you know, healthy bonds with um, people outside our family. We need the emotional attachment. So we always have a sense of belonging. We always know where we're gonna come to. We always know where we're wanted. We always know where we're loved. So for me, that's why I really enjoy the infant touch and massage instruction. Um, my dad told me, you know, as, as, as a parent, um, never let um, your children sleep alone. Let your children sleep with you for as long as they want. There's nothing wrong with um, your children sleeping with you because they'll know that, that that's a bond and they'll know not to just go out, you know, when they get older, you know, they're just not going to attach to the first person that gives attention to them. So that was my dad's teaching um, for um, social and emotional and making um, healthy attachments. And I think you froze. Well, it looks like she froze. She is located in a rural area. A lot of our presenters are located in uh, rural areas. So while we're waiting for her to get back online, let me, I decided to do four questions for tonight. So thank you for sticking with us. Um, so let's do another trivia question. Uh, our question number two is, um, who, who, who was the last Diné Culture Night presenter? The first person to answer in chat will, um, let's see. We'll also get a mug. And um, this one says, right? And um, uh, the net culture night, ooh, Jodine, let me see. Is it Jodine? Let's see, let's see. Let me look at the answers. It is not Warlance Chi, um, not Fillmore. Those presenters are through um, ceremonies prevention. The answer is Kevin Dillon, Jodine Nerva. I have a mug for you. Um, go ahead and um, private message me your address and I will mail this to you along with a couple of other goodies. You know, it's, you know, school time. We have a pen. I don't know if you guys can see that. It has, it says, UNM did the Nebiza Bohosha. So they all have like these really cute Navajo phrases um, on them. And of course, my favorite is this Shaman Hassan, this uh, stress ball, right? Okay. 
So our last presenter was Kevin Boleyn. And um, he talked about using how he uses the journey of the hero twins um, as a guide for, um, you know, adolescents, you know. And so um, we recorded that he allowed us to record it and he also gave us permission to share it. So we'll, we'll be sharing that on our um, UNM Navajo language YouTube page. That's where we post all our presentations. Put the link and in while, the chat. So. Okay. And Manny will put the link in the chat if you want to watch that. Um, the other thing is I have a couple other questions that are going to come up and we do have um, a Navajo language uh, um, web page um, that we uh, built in um, honor of, you know, celebrating 50 years of Navajo language instruction at UNM. Um, you know, we had some big plans, um, but we had to see, sit, and find other ways to celebrate. So we decided to go with a web page. Um, and the web page is, let's see. Let's see if it's on here. Navajo, there it is, navajo.unm.edu. Um, if you haven't looked at that web page, you know, take a couple of minutes and take a look at it. I will be asking a couple of questions specifically from that page for our next two um, trivia rounds. So just a little bit of entertainment in between. Um, And it looks like we are back on with our presenter. You know, sometimes our presenters run out of a minute. Um, if you're in a rural area, uh, you know, you might be presenting from your phone. So, um, you know, so we just kind of roll with the punches and, and, you know, just enjoy the presentation. I'm back again, sorry about that. Um, it's, it's a matter of connecting to something else to get back on. Um, so we've done self-help. Um, we've done social and emotional. And then teaching infant massage. Um, when I teach infant massage, um, I go and I use a doll. I, I have a doll. Um, please don't ask me his name because I don't have a name. And, you know, this is my doll that I use to, to, to teach. And my mom's always buy me little um, onesies for a baby with little cute sayings on them. So I use him, you know, to, to, to teach um, parents. And then they follow along what I do with on him. And then they do the same thing depending on what mom and dad's concerns are or the caregiver, whatever their concerns are, whatever they want to touch on you know, we'll work on that. So when I teach infant massage, you massage your baby because the, the, the whole idea is for you to get to know your baby, your bond with your baby. We'll talk about areas to begin the massage. Have you ever massaged your baby? If so, you know, what areas have you massaged or what areas do you mostly massage? And we'll start with that area because that's familiar to your baby. And we'll start from there and slowly work our way around and eventually we'll come to different entrance points for your baby. So then um, I follow the parent, you know, parent concerns what you want to work on. In return, the parent follows what I'm doing. And then I, at the same time, am watching baby so I follow the baby's reaction and how baby is responding. And then the parent also follows the baby and how baby is responding. I use the elements of touch massage, which is, you know, the different type of rhythm. There's different type of pressure, the positioning, and also the environment that you are um, creating that space to do infant touch and massage. And using basic massage just, you know, the touch, you know, the spreading, the pressing, and then the pressing, and then the rolling. And then I help, you know, parents, you know, co-regulate, we help, you know, calm down and be at ease and relax and, you know, to, 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 to massage baby, you know, be in that, in that space. 
Um, Teaching infant touch and massage can be individual or group sessions. The group sessions are usually not that that um, big. It's a limited of uh, four babies and a maximum of two parents, two adults. I like to use icebreakers to get to know each other. I want to know my parents. I want to know my babies. So uh, maybe we'll learn our clans. Um, we'll teach clans, you know, kinship and you know, greet each other as, you know, as relatives, the, you know, the way the clan system works. And I like to use that icebreaker because as Navajos, you know, a lot of, um, I, I come a, a, among um, individuals who are really shy, you know, they're, they're really quiet. And um, for our babies to learn, we need to be social with our babies. And a lot of um, parents can be really shy towards their children. So I'm over here, you know, entertaining the baby and, you know, jumping up and down and, you know, making all these different sounds and, and waiting for mom or dad or someone to join in so that they can, you know, learn these skills and apply it to, you know, developing that relationship with their baby. Um, and though we don't ask questions yet, don't die these kids. We don't ask questions, and I um, welcome you know um, a lot of you know questions from my my parents. I prefer that they do ask questions because this really benefits them as a parent and then their baby, and then they're they them creating that bond. Basic conversation skills again, you know, where we tend to be shy, you know. We just keep quiet and we keep to ourselves. Um, so, you know, we, we want to teach our children to be social, you know, to ask questions, to talk and to, and it, it's okay to do that. And then we, we um, I like to ask, you know, each parent why they are receiving infant touch and massage instructions for their baby. And I also like to ask, what kind of massage are, are you already doing with your baby? Sometimes, you know, parents are doing something and they don't, they don't realize that it is, you know, infant touch and massage. And then, you know, what do you want to work on? What are your concerns? You know, what areas you want to work on? And then we talk about, you know, when you're at home and you're going to, you know, do infant touch and massage on your baby, where do you normally hang out? Helping that parent that family to figure out where they can create a space so that they can, you know, do infant touch and massage with their baby. And then, you know, of course, parents ask questions. What parents need to bring? Um, and my daughter laughed when the first thing she saw was your baby. She goes, mom, do you have to put that there? And I said, yes, because sometimes when I show up at um, families, homes, um, their baby is asleep, or they'll say, oh, baby is with dad over at the sheep corral or something, and those, so then we wait, you know, so baby needs to definitely be there. A blanket to lay your baby on, a receiving blanket or a light blanket to cover your baby, because, you know, we're going to undress baby. Um, if you're comfortable with taking your baby's pamper off, you can do that. But if we're going to massage, you know, that tummy area, the pamper, you know, you can just roll it back, you know, but the rest of the, your baby's body will be covered. Um, a baby oil or an oil of your choice to have available. Um, what's that oil called that I, coconut oil works really well. If you want to use baby oil, you can. We have to be really careful with, um, the scent, however, if you choose um, an, an oil that has a scent, you don't want it to be really strong and it should be safe to use on your baby's um, body because babies are fragile. You know, they're really, um, their skin is still um, developing, you know, skin so we have to be careful with that. A cushion or a blanket for you to sit on if you're going to sit on the floor or if you, you want to do this outside under the cha or something, then, you know, something to sit on. 
And then thoughts about your lighting, you know, if you want music as well. Um, believe it or not, you know, um, lighting and music can contribute to sensory overload for, for babies. So we, 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 I like to talk about those things. Precautions. Um, in the beginning, it can be stressful for both um, you and your baby. Infant touch and massage can inflame already inflamed area. So, you know, if there's an area that you know that baby is aching or maybe baby just got a shot, right? Their, their, their immunization shot is already inflamed. So we don't touch that area. All in all, if they get an immunization shot, so we wait um, at least two days before, you, before we do infant touch and massage. If the baby is sick or has a fever, no massage. And, you know, baby's body temperature will drop five degrees with the use of an oil. That's why we keep your baby covered except for the area that's being massaged. If baby just ate, we don't massage the abdomen. And then we wait 30 minutes after the massage before we feed baby. And that's the end of my presentation. If anybody has any questions. We have one question in the chat box from Ikniera uh, Chi. I massage my son while he's breastfeeding. Is that okay or would you not recommend that? Oh no, I think that's okay. That's just, to me that would be that extra bonding, right? Because breastfeeding also promotes the bonding. So if your baby is breastfeeding, you know, and if you're massaging his back, you know, just be a little bit, um, you can just hold him. That's, um, that's um, massage, you know, just put a little bit of pressure, whatever he, he, he likes. Um, of course, you know, you can just hold, I would, I would suggest to just, you know, just hold baby. And then if you want to, to use all the other movements or the pressing, then let him wait about um, the, the 30 minutes and then you can, you know, do the, do the rolls or you can do this, the, 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 the spraying or you can add more pressure and do the presses with him. Breastfeeding is definitely a great way to bond with your baby as well. So we encourage breastfeeding. Okay. Thank you for your answer. It looks like Tamara also does the same as Kishniera. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Um, while we wait for a question, or um, feel free to unmute yourself if you would like to ask a question. Uh, but um, we wanted to mention that we are providing uh, certificates for uh, professional development. So we decided to implement that um, you know, just uh, not too long ago. Um, let's see, we have another question. My baby sleeps in a cradle board and sometimes is a little stiff after a nap. What kinds of massage do you recommend after mm -hmm. nap time? Um, Can you ask that again? It paused, you froze a little bit. Oh, it froze. Okay, my baby sleeps in a cradle board and sometimes is a little stiff after a nap. What kinds of massage do you recommend after nap time? After nap time would be a little bit more uh, aggressive. Um, so what kind of um, massage do you do with your baby right now after um, he wakes up or she wakes up or do you do any type of um, massage with your baby? Hi, this is Teresa. I'm the one who asked the question. Thank you for sharing your, your knowledge and um, answering our questions for us. So after I unwrap her, usually I just um, just kind of rub her, uh, like do little, you know, like if you're making a snow angel with the arms, I'll do some of that a little bit or um, do like bicycles with her legs. And that's about it. But um, I have noticed that maybe her shoulders and her arms are a little bit um, kind of scrunched from after her naps from being in the cradle board. Yeah, and, and usually when they get out of their cradle board, they, they already stretch, right? A, 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 a baby. Um, 
And when we stretch, you know, we, we feel that sensation. So that's the sensation we want to give our baby. So um, what you're doing with the leg bicycles, that works, you know, um, and just, just well, he, she or he's laying in the, in the cradle board, you can, let me bring this camera down on here, you know, with like you do the bicycle with the leg, you know, kind of just like move arms around, baby's arms around. Um, you can even um, bring baby, even though baby was already in the cradle board, you can, um, how old is your baby? She's seven months. She's so seven almost months. growing out of the cradle board, but still we're, we're, we're hanging in there. <laughs> okay, so, um, so you can even um, pick up your baby, you know, and kind of just run your hands up and down um, to kind of wake, wake baby up, bring, bring, you know, bring um, legs up like this um, to wake up. You can even turn baby around the other way and hold, hold baby like this. Um, it's just really simple. Um, when it comes to um, waking up baby, we want to gently bring them out of it and it's gonna take time for them to get used to the massage because we want to get to a little bit more pressure than um, just, just a touch to, to start stimulating um, their body muscles to say, you know, okay, I need to, to get up and I need to do a little bit more. But what you're doing is working now. Um, we just want to add a little bit more pressure, but that depends on how much pressure baby is willing to take in as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Oh. Hi, my name is Krista. I have a quick question about the duration of the massage. Uh, does it depend on the area you're working with? Um, or do you have a recommendation like only like five minutes or like three minutes, things like that when you talk to your clients? Typically an hour, but that whole hour is not dedicated to massage. You know, in between there's going to be a lot of questions. A massage once a week also. Um, and it depends on also really how much your baby is able to handle. So it can be anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. If your baby hasn't been massaged before, you know, we're gonna be learning um, about your baby and learning the different pressures your baby is willing to take, the type of touches your baby prefers and, you know, and then that just goes on and on, you know, the pressures get a little bit deeper that the, we start using the different touches as well. So it really depends on the baby, how long he or she um, will allow us, will, you know, how allow us to, to massage him or her. We have another question. What kind of massage for baby to sleep from Winona? Um, gentle, gentle strokes um, and just holes. Gentle strokes and just holes. You know, just, just really simple holes to, to calm them down. When you're putting your baby to bed, like after um, bath time, and you're lotioning your baby, um, that's, you know, that's a type of um, massage. So, you know, just kind of holding when you're lotioning their leg. Yeah, run the lotion on their leg, depending on how much pressure your baby will take. Um, that's the pressure that you're gonna use, or you can just go, you know, down gently wherever you're lotion your baby. Is it the same for fussiness also from Winona? The same for fussiness would mostly be um, holding your baby. You know, that very first picture that we have um, that I had up just really just holding your baby. 
and kind of and experiencing, you know, what 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 type of um, pressure and calming baby down. It's it, everything. Every um, massage and technique is not going to be the same for every baby. Um, what we use on one baby to calm and what we use on one baby to wake up or to loosen muscles is not gonna work with an, another baby. Another baby may require different kind of massage techniques and different um, pressure levels. It really depends on the baby, the type of um, massage that they like and what their body allows them to do and what their body will respond to and how their body responds. So that's, that, that itself takes time for us to learn and you as a mom and your baby, it's gonna take time for you to learn and figure out each other. And so environment is really important when it comes, come, comes to that. So you're able to relax and you know, learn about each other, the, 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 the little jerks or the little reactions or the little sounds that they're gonna to make to the different type of um, presses or the different type of pressure that you're gonna use on your baby. Okay, um, it looks like we have one more question, but before I ask that question, um, let's do our third um, trivia for a, what do you call it, a travel mug. This one says, it's shiny red, there we go. So the question is, um, how many credit hours is required for a Navajo miner? Uh, the first person to, ooh, ooh, keba, let's see, keba, keba, see, number 18. Yes, it is. Congratulations, keba, see, I'll mail this to you. Please, um, uh, please uh, send me, private message me, or what do you call, chat me, private chat me your um, address. So, good job. That was fast. Our, we have one more trivia, but here's a question from Barsin Benali. You had indicated not to promote sitting in a W position. Can you clarify more on this, please? W position, okay. So how do I stop sharing? Um, so that, will be because, how do I explain this? When we, okay, so when we're babies, we're, we're, we're born, um, you know, with, you know, okay, where's my camera? As we grow, um, as babies grow, we want the muscle to be in the socket and we want it to form like this. So that's that. So so to start off with, that's why we encourage um, tummy time, because when baby is going to push to use his arm to you know to to push himself up from that tummy position, these this right here is going to be working. So the the socket is going to be forming around when a baby W sits it doesn't allow it to form like this. It doesn't allow it to, 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 to form. It's gonna be loose. So baby will be more um, susceptible to, um, you know, old babies will be, you know, kind of just loose and stuff because their bones are not connecting the way it should be. And that's why, you know, <clears throat> that's why, um, what I learned from um, physical therapists is W sit is not good for um, babies, you know, for them to be like this with their feet under their, their butt is um, the best position for them. And along the same lines, the same thing for a, um, a, a walker. Um, they don't encourage the use of a walker because in a walker, baby's feet just hang. So they're not putting that pressure on their feet to develop that, um, that you know, strong connection right in here. 
So, you know, later on in life, there's hip problems um, and stuff like that. So that's why um, <clears throat> we don't encourage W sitting. Thank you for your answer, Meltina. All right, you guys, it's about time to wrap up for our last question. We have these mouse uh, mouse pads. And this one says the Nebizad Bohosha on it. It's really cool. There you go. So your trivia question is, who was the first person to teach Navajo at UNM? And of course, I'll add some goodies to that. You know, like a pen, a, a notebook, uh, a small notebook, it's not big, you know. And this answer can be found at navajo.unm.edu. There it is. Irene Silentman is the answer from Barsine Benali. Barsine, please, um, let's see, private message me your email, or not your email address, your mailing address so I can send that to you with a few goodies. And um, thank you to everyone for attending. Um, our next culture night is next month with uh, Marlene Talboy from Round Rock, Arizona, early childhood education. Okay. And thank you to our presenter, Meltina, for sharing information on um, infant touch massage. I hope um, the information was useful for you guys and also helps you in creating some bonds with your children, your nieces, your nephews. You know, all of that relates back to as well. You know, we always hear phrases like wait. So those are probably uh, applicable, applicable there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Oh, thank, thank you. you.